Hello guys, welcome to another video in the series of coding. Today we are going to do the problem which is called longest subsequence with limited sum. So you are given an integer array nums of length n and an integer array queries of length m. You have to return an array answer of length m where answer of i is the maximum size of a subsequence that you can take from nums such that the sum of its element is less than or equal to queries of i. Let's try to take an example to understand this. Suppose you are given nums of i is equal to these elements. And then you are given some queries. Corresponding to each of the query, you have to return answer. Let's say um, what is with the help of an example. Well, let's see what they are trying to say. For example, in the first query, they have given us a value of 3. So that means you have to collect elements from this nums array. You have to take subsequence from this nums array such that the sum of the elements should be less than or equal to 3. So the sum of the elements that you are taking should be less than or equal to 3. If, for example, if you try to take these two elements, the sum will become 9. 9 will be greater than 3. This is not allowed, right? So you have to take a sum of 3. So you can pick these two elements. 1 plus 2 will be equal to 3 and 3 is less than or equal to 3. So you, you are picking these two elements, 1 and 2. So for this query, the answer is going to be 2. It is 2 because you are picking two elements and the sum of these two elements is less than or equal to 3, which is the value of our query. Okay, let's take the next example. The next query is equal to 10. So for 10, you have to pick elements from this nums array such that the sum of those elements is less than or equal to 10. And you have to try to pick as many elements as you can. So let's take an example. If you pick 5, then you pick 4, then you pick 1, you will be able to get 5 plus 4 plus 1. This will be equal to 10. Okay, or else you can pick 1 plus 2 plus 4. 1 plus 2 is equal to 3, 3 plus 4 is equal to 7. So this will also be less than or equal to 10. If you try to add this element also, you will get a value which will be equal to 12 and 12 will be greater than 10. So you cannot pick 4 elements. Okay, At max, you can pick 3 elements, either 1, 2, 4 or let's say you pick 4, 5, 1. Right? You can pick any of these 3 elements but the answer is going to remain 3 because at max, you can pick only 3 elements. Okay. For 21, let's see. For 21, you can pick all the elements because 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 5 is equal to 12 and 12 is less than or equal to 21. So you can pick all the four elements. So what is the logic? Uh, it's very simple, right? You have to pick maximum elements. Let's consider the case for the query 10, right? So if you have to pick maximum elements, how will you start picking? It is very logical that we will start picking from the smallest element, right? So that you can pick more and more elements. So we will try to pick the smallest element so that we can try to later pick more and more elements. So if we pick the smallest element, uh, the sum till now is 1, right? Next, we will try to pick 2. The sum becomes equal to 3. It is still less than 10. So we can continue picking elements. Then next, the next smallest is 4. So the sum becomes equal to 7. 7 is still less than 10. So we can continue picking elements. If we pick 5, the sum becomes equal to 12. Now 12 becomes greater than 10. That means you cannot pick 5, right? So you can pick these 3 elements. So maximum elements that you can collect is 3. 1, 2, 3. 3 elements, right? So for the query 10, the answer is equal to 3. So it is very logical that you are going to pick the smallest elements. So it is very simple if you sort this array. So the first step is going to be sorting this nums array. So we are going to sort it so that we start picking from the smallest elements and we can pick more and more elements okay so the first step is we are going to sort this now let us see what is the next step after sorting suppose you have the query 10 what are you going to do you are going to try to pick first then second then third element and so on right if you do this for uh, finding out when the sum is going to exceed 10 right you will have to iterate over all the elements of the nums array again from beginning to end right so the time complexity of that will be order of n to find out when the sum exceeds 10, what you are going to do in the brute force approach, you will first pick 1, then 2, then 4. If you try picking 5, the sum will exceed, so you will not pick. But the time complexity of this will be order of n. So what you can do instead of doing this, after sorting, the second step you can do is in just order of 1, you can find out how many elements you have to take for sum less than equal to 10. How can we do that? By doing, by declaring something called as a prefix array. Right? So what we will do, already we will pre-compute the values of the sum. So what do I mean? So initially the sum is 1, right? So the prefix array sum will be 1. Now 1 plus 2 is equal to 3. So corresponding to this, I will store 3. 
Now 3 plus 4 is equal to 7. So here I will store 7. 7 plus 5 is equal to 12. Here I will store 12. Okay. So what is going to happen? Now when you do this, now you have already computed the value of the sums, right? You have made a prefix array. So the second step is making a prefix array. First step is sorting. Second step is making a prefix array. What is the use of this? Now suppose the query is equal to 10, okay? So what you can do? You can use binary search, okay? In C++, you can directly use the upper bound function, which is nothing but binary search. And you can just find out how many elements have value less than equal to 10. So when you do the binary search, in just log of n complexity, right? In just log of n complexity, instead of order of n, you can just calculate by doing the binary search, where will 10 lie? So if you do that, you will find out that if 10 were an element, it will come here, right? So if you find out if the if the position of 10, if the position of 10 is the third position, right? Okay, that means that there are three elements before 10, right? So easily if, if from the prefix array, you can find out that there are three elements which are having some, which are having, um, which are satisfying the condition less than equal to 10. That means in the nums array, the, you can pick up three elements which will give you a sum less than or equal to 10. Okay, very simple. So after the prefix array, you have to just apply simple binary search. So the third step will be applying binary search. Now let's see uh, this example what we are going to do. So uh, the first query, what is the first query? The first query is three, right? So if you apply the binary search, you will get if you apply the binary search on this, you will find out 3 is here, right? So from the binary search, you can find out that there are two elements which are less than or equal to, uh, which are satisfying the condition, okay? Um, that the sum of two elements in the nums array, if you take, it will be less than or equal to 3, okay? Similarly, for 10, you can apply binary search on the prefix array. You will find out that the upper bound function will, will land you here. That means the element 10 will come here. That means there are three elements which are going to satisfy the condition and three will be the answer. Similarly, if you apply binary search for 21, the iterator will land you here. That means there are four elements which are going to uh, satisfy the given condition, right? So simple. Now let's discuss the time complexity of this. So first we are sorting. So for sorting, the time complexity is n log n, where n is the number of elements in the nums array. Now um, for prefix, the time complexity will just be um, order of n, right? So here n log n is anyway greater, so it doesn't matter, okay? So now for binary search, what will be the time complexity? For binary search, the time complexity is log n for one element and number of queries is m, right? So this will be the total time complexity n log n plus m log n, right? So n log n plus m log n will be the total time complexity of this approach. Now let's move forward to coding this. So it is very simple. There are three steps. First step is you are going to sort the nums vector. So let us sort it. After sorting the nums vector, what is the next step? You have to make a prefix array. So vector int prefix and the prefix array is just nums dot size, right? And initially the first element of the prefix is just equal to same as the nums of zero because um, there is no preceding element. So the first element will be same. For all the remaining elements, we will have to uh, fill the prefix array. So let us fill the prefix array. What is prefix of i? Prefix of i is just prefix of i minus 1 plus nums of i. Okay, after this, what you can do? You can just iterate over all the queries. So for int i equal to 0 i less than queries dot size i plus plus rate so what is the query let's say query is equal to queries of i this is our current query so you can just apply um, upper bound function on this so let me declare a answer vector so vector int answer so what you're going to do you can apply the upper bound function using the upper bound function you can just find out from the prefix array. So where are you applying the upper bound function? On the entire prefix array. So from the beginning to the end. And on which element are you applying? On the query, we are applying the upper bound function, right? This will return the position of the iterator, okay? So it will tell you where the element which you are searching in the query, where that element will land up. If from this you subtract the beginning iterator, you will get the position of 
or the number of elements that you need so this is what you have to push in the answer vector so that's it and after this you can return the answer so let us give the condition return answer and hopefully this should work so uh, just one thing here i have started i equal to 0 i should start from i equal to 1 because already we have declared for the 0th element right so now let's run the code and see it's working let's submit and see it's accepted thank you for being patient and listening